Christmas. They are Santa's naughtiest little elves. The Smiley Morning Show. Broadcasting live to the North Pole and all over the world. This is 99.5 WZPLFM. You're listening to Smiley's annual Christmas pageant at Moondog Tavern. We now return to the stunning climax of the Smiley Morning Show's A Christmas Carol. On 99.5 WZPL, live from the Moondog Tavern. A darkness had swallowed Scrooge. He was standing alone, dazed. A harsh wind and deafening thunder swirled around him. Angela Buckman was breaking into Channel 13 with updates. TV-sized Angela Buckman, not that 50-foot-tall Angela Buckman at the fashion mall. Scrooge had moved beyond the present, but had not yet been greeted in this new frighteningly frightening place. A spirit lurked and slowly approached him out of the black fog. It was the spirit of Christmas yet to come. A tall figure, entirely cloaked and hooded in black. All that could be seen of the spirit were old, bony hands with long, rigid fingers protruding from the frayed black sleeves of the cloak, like Paul Poteet reaching out for his grandpa pills. I take it that I am in the presence of the spirit of Christmas yet to come. <sighs> hey! You're about to show me <laughs> shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. <sighs> Is that not so, spirit? <sighs> spirit, I fear you more than any scepter I have seen. <laughs> that actually was scepter. Will you not speak to me? <laughs> Very well. The specter, <laughs> as in Phil, lifts his arm and points beyond Scrooge. Lead on, then. The night is passing fast, and it's precious time to me. Lead on, spirit. The spirit walks slowly as to, so as not to spill any more glasses. The spirit walks slowly as Scrooge follows. They approach a small band of brokers in familiar places. Why, I know those men. (laughs) Not the first time that Scrooge has said this in public. (laughs) And this place, it's the stock exchange. It's a second home to me. The spirit only points to the group of men. No, I don't know anything about it. Either way, I only know he's dead. When did he die? Last night, I believe. Why, what was the matter with him? I thought he'd never die. God knows. What has he done with his money? I haven't heard. Left it with his company, perhaps. I only know he left it. I only know he hasn't left it to me. (laughs) (laughs) Good one, good one. (laughs) Well, it's likely to be a cheap funeral. I don't know anybody who would go to it. Suppose we make up a party and volunteer? I don't mind going if a lunch is provided. But I must be fed for all the trouble that it's worth. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it matters little to me either way. I never wear black gloves and I never eat lunch. But I'll offer to go if anyone else will. Well, off to business. Goodbye. 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 (laughs) Have these men no sense of decency or decorum? Spirit, what is this? Why am I seeing this? (laughs) The spirit points in the opposite direction Revealing a greasy, betraggled old man Sitting in a chair and surrounded by an odd collection of junk boxes Old iron, rags, old clothes, moldy books and bottles An old crone, Mrs. Oliver, walks in with a bundle of items looking to sell A good day this time, Joe! Come in, don't be shy! Show old Joe what good is he brought him! Mrs. Oliver throws her bundle to the floor. What on then, eh? He took care of himself well, huh? Who's worse for the loss of a few things like these? Not a dead man, I suppose. <laughs> if he wanted to keep him after he was dead, the wicked old screw, why wasn't he more natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after him when he was struck with the death instead of lying, gasping out his last breath there. All alone, by himself. Well then, I waited till the last ways and no one else showed. Now, get on with it and let me 
me know the value of this dead man's things. Mmm, silk scarf, bed curtains, ring still attached, an old tome on money lending, a pleasure device made out of a potato and a guitar, guitar string. I'll give you one pound eight and not another six pence if I was to be boiled in my own pudding for doing it. Who's next? And this is how it ends. He's getting everyone away from when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Spirit, this is a fearful place. Surely there can be no reason to bring me to this godforsaken part of the city except for the case of this unhappy man might be my own. Yes, the items they have stolen are similar to mine, especially that potato. <laughs> I see the point, but surely there is someone who feels some emotion caused by this man's death. Show the person to me, I beg you! <laughs> the spirit points once again. A family sits around a table. Oh, finally you've come, Thomas. What have you heard? Is it good or bad? Are we ruined, Thomas? Did he deny you the extra time you had asked for? Has he evicted us? No. There is no hope yet, Caroline. Only if he repents, that old miser. He is past repenting, dear. He is dead. Dead? Oh, God be praised! Oh, Lord, forgive me. I thought he was merely trying to avoid me, but what I have been told is quite true. Not only was he very ill, but he was dying, even then. To whom will our debt be transferred? I don't know. But before that time, we will be ready with the money. And even if we weren't, it would be a bad fortune indeed to find a creditor who is as merciless as he. We may sleep tonight with light hearts, Caroline. <laughs> Scrooge! Oh, Scrooge! Spirit! I asked to see some emotion connected with this man's death, and you show me only pleasure. I, de <laughs> I demand to be shown some tenderness connected with the death. <laughs> well, speaking of pleasure, the spirit's bony, outstretched finger extends one more time. That's what I said. A fog lifts, and we see the Cratchit family somber in their home. And he took a child and set him in the midst of them, and he said to them, Whenever you welcome a little child, you welcome me. Mrs. Cratchit tries not to show the tears welling in her eyes. Oh, this room, it hurts my eyes with the dim candlelight. I'm better now. I wouldn't show we guys to your father when he comes home. Not for the world. It, it must be near his time. Past it, rather. But I think he's walked a little slower than he used to these last few evenings, Mother. Yes, I've to walk with. I have known him to walk with Tiny Tim upon his shoulder very fast indeed, but he was very light to carry, and Father loved him so. There was no trouble, no trouble at all. Oh, oh, is that your father now? Bob slowly enters. Mrs. Cratchit stands to greet him. He looks up at his family with sad eyes. I went by there today. It's why I'm late. I wish you could have been there. It would have done you good to see how green it is, but you'll see it often. I promised him that I would walk there every Sunday to visit him, you see. But guess whom I saw today? Fred Hallowell, Mr. Scrooge's nephew. He saw that I was a little down and, well, he is the most pleasant speaking man you've ever heard. And so I was not afraid to tell him. And this is what he said to me. I'm heartily sorry, Mr. Cratchit, heartily sorry. And he pledged to be of any service he could to us. It really seems as if he had known Tiny Tim and felt with us. And I've got a good, and I've got good news for you, Peter. What is it, Father? Mr. Hallowell told me that he has been able to secure an apprenticeship for you. You'll begin at eight shillings a week starting Tuesday. Eight shillings a week? That's enough to laser off all my hair at Indie Premier like Tony Williams <laughs> and then kill all of the lice that were living in it with lice slayers like Paul Petit. <laughs> and because I just said those two things, Tony and Paul will get to eat this week. Thanks, sponsor money. <laughs> Indeed. Anyway, it's Premier Laser Center. Whatever. <laughs> Thelicelayers.com. You're dead, Tiny Tim. Indeed, the lasers killed him. <laughs> and even as we all move on in different ways, my family, I know none of us will ever forget Tiny Tim, shall we? No! no never, never, Father! 
Cratchit home is once again taken by a storm and black fog. As it fades, Scrooge and the spirit find themselves standing amidst a field of tombstones. A graveyard. Spirit, something tells me that the moment of our parting is at hand. <laughs> again with a bony hand. The spirit's bony hand stretched out with one finger affixed upon a soot-covered tombstone. Before I draw nearer to that stone to which you point, answer me one question! (laughs) Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? (laughs) The course of a man's life, if continued in the same ways, will determine certain ends. I accept it. But if the if he departs from those courses, the ends must change. <laughs> Say it is so with what you show me. <laughs> the spirit's finger. Here we go again with the finger, Dave. The spirit's finger remained rigid. Affixed to the marker, Scrooge creeps toward the stone, trembling. Seeing the name inscribed there, he falls to his knees. No! To your knees! No! To your knees! It can't be. Am I that man? Am I that man who died, whom no one mourned? Say it isn't so, spirit. Say it isn't so! (laughs) Spirit, hear me. I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I have before your intervention. Why show me this if I am past all hope? (laughs) Surely your nature intercedes me and pities me. Assure me that I may yet change these shadows you have shown me. By a changed life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will remember the lessons of the past. I will live in the present. I will live towards the future. I will stop belching on the air. I will stop singing over the ends of songs. I'll try my hardest to start lactating so I can help Sarah feed Noah. The spirits of all three will strive with me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Oh, tell me that I may sponge. I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Period. Scrooge Scrooge grasps the spirit's hand, grabs at the rope, again with a bony hand. He grasps the spirit's hand, grabs at the rope, pleading, crying, then pulling the figure down until the cloak crumples into a pile of black as he pleads. Scrooge scrapes and claws at the pile of dust and ragged cloth, desperate, frantic, hysterical, beyond awareness. And then he hears the carolers. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Scrooge hears the chime, tolling 8 a.m. Radio Indiana. (laughs) (laughs) He opens his eyes to find he has returned to his bedroom. The sun glints through a window. It is morning. Where am I? Wait, what day is this? It's morning, but what day? How long have I been with the spirits? I don't know. But I'm alive. I'm alive! The bed curtains! They are still here. (laughs) They're not torn and down. They are here. I am here. (laughs) Woohoo! I don't want... (laughs) I don't know what to do. I feel light as a feather. I'm happy as an angel. I'm merry as a schoolboy. <laughs> That's a lot of similes. <laughs> Scrooge runs to his window, looking out. A boy appears. 
The same boy who attempted to sing to Scrooge at the counting house the evening before. Hello, you boy, what day is it? Ah! Wait, don't be afraid, my boy. Let me just close my robe. <laughs> Sorry, there we go. Now, uh, what day is it? Wh- what day is it? <laughs> Yes, what day is it today? Why, it's Christmas Day! Christmas Day! Are you quite sure, my good fellow? Yep, that's why the man cried and let me out of his van. (laughs) Then the spirits have done it all in one night. Why, of course, they can do anything they like. Of course they can. (laughs) Are you seeing ghosts, sir? Because my mommy sees ghosts, but daddy says it's just because she smells markers and paint cans a lot. Never mind that, boy. Do you know the palterers in the next street at the corner? I should hope so. Mommy and Daddy tried to sell me to his to him for markers when I was a baby. They said I was a little tasty goose, but he could tell I was a human, so no deal. What a wonderful boy. A remarkable boy. Do you know whether they sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? What? The one as big as me? That's my girlfriend. What a delightful boy. (laughs) Pleasure talking with you. Yes, my back. Yes, my buck. That one as big as you. It's hanging there now, right next to all the gerbils. It is. Why, then you must go and buy it. Yes, go buy it now. With kisses? That's how my mommy says she buys stuff. No, no. No, go buy it with money. And tell them to bring it around so that I can give it directions where to deliver it. Come back with me. Come back to me. Come back with him. As long as your robe's closed. Christmas comes but once a year, doesn't it, Scrooge? Come back in five minutes. I'll give you a half a crown. Royal. (laughs) (laughs) The boy turns and runs like a shot to the polterer. (laughs) I'll send it to Bob Cratchit. He won't know who sent it. I won't tell him. (laughs) It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. Oh, Tiny, Tiny Tim. Oh, my soul, Tiny Tim will live. They will all live. The spirits of Christmas past, <laughs> present, and future. Happy New Year. <laughs> Scrooge quickly dresses in his finest clothes and runs out his front door. It is at this moment the boy returns with a poulterer. I found the meat man! Ah, here's the turkey. How are you, my boy? I was right. (laughs) The turkey is twice the size of Tiny Tim. It's twice the size of you, my lad. Mr. Scrooge! Merry Christmas, my fine butcher. Merry Christmas, sir. Why, it's impossible to carry that to Gettosburg. You must have crabs. I beg your pardon, sir. Oh, you must need a cab. Ah, Gettosburg, sir? (laughs) I say Gettosburg, sir? Gettosburg, sir. Uber. Yes, this splendid turkey is to be delivered immediately to the home of Bob Cratchit and family in Gettosburg. Here, I've written the directions down. Here's the money for the turkey. Well, thank you, sir. What? Well, you're welcome. It's not highlighted, but I'll go ahead and read it anyway. <laughs> and here's the money for the delivery. Thank you for reading your line, sir. You're welcome. Here's a tip for you, too, sir. Thank you, sir. And here's a half a crown for you, my boy. Well deserved. Yes, well deserved. I'm going to use this to buy Mommy some markers and a gerbil dinner. Oh, and a very Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Oh, yes. Oh, Down the street, Scrooge notices Mr. Jeeves and Mr. Howell, the charity collectors, quietly chatting. He hurries toward them. My dear sir, how do you do? I hope you did well yesterday. It was a very good thing to do, a very good thing. (laughs) Mr. Scrooge? Yes, that's my name. I fear it hasn't uh, been pleasant to you, my name and all. Allow me to ask my forgiveness. (laughs) 
<laughs> and yours too, sir. Yes, sir. And will you have the goodness? Scrooge, who, Scrooge who has somehow turned into Shaft <laughs> in the last couple of paragraphs. <laughs> Scrooge. <laughs> Damn right. Scrooge whispers in Mr. Howell's ear a very generous donation. Lord bless me! My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you quite serious? If you please, not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in that, I assure you. (laughs) Will you do me a favor? My dear sir, I don't know what to say with such generous... Don't say anything, please. Come in and see me sometime. Well, come and see me, and we'll do it. We will! We will! Thank you! I'm much obliged! I thank you very much! Bless you both! Merry Christmas! Good to see you! (laughs) I'm chuckling like Burl Ives in another one of our Christmas pageants because would you believe it if I told you Scrooge went to church that day? He did! and walked about the streets and watched the people hurrying to and fro and patted children on the head as they passed and found everything that could yield him pleasure. He had never dreamed that any walk, that anything at all, could give him as much happiness. In the afternoon, he turned his steps toward his nephew's house where Janet and Fred were opening gifts. Oh, Fred, it's beautiful and it's too much. You shouldn't have spent so much. But I love you, my dear, and my wife shall have the best Fifty Shades of Dungeon swing on Christmas Day. (laughs) I can't wait to swing with you. I know, my dear, I know. Now, who can that be? Swingers? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. No one's expected at this hour. Hello, Fred. (gasps) Uncle Scrooge. The very name. It is I, your (laughs) Uncle Scrooge. I recall an invitation you made to me yesterday to come and dine with you. If that invitation is still to force, I would like to accept it. Why, I don't know what to say. Well, you could say, bye humbug, a resort I heartily repent of and shall never use again. So come on in. Come in? Why, of course, of course you shall come in. Hooray, Uncle Scrooge, you have made us both very happy. Oh, may I introduce my wife, Janet. Janet, my Uncle Scrooge. My dear, it's plain to me now why my nephew chose you among of all the women. You are indeed a very bit as lovely as I heard, and not a man, which is good. Why, thank you, Uncle Scrooge. We are very happy you are here. I'm sorry for the things I said about Christmas and sorry for the poor reception I gave you yesterday, of which you were so undeserving. I see the image of my sister in your face, only regular sized, because her face was stretched out so far. I loved her, big head and all, you know, and she you. (laughs) I know it, Uncle Scrooge. She loved you very much and wished until her dying day, when her large heart exploded, that we should always be close. And so we are, Fred, and so we shall be. So we shall be. (laughs) <laughs> and so, for the first time in both of their lives, Scrooge and his nephew Fred embraced one another with a hug. Did you hear that? A hug. Not just a small hug, we either. We were just hugging there. You and Fred embraced yeah, one another it. with a complete, like full-body hug. Oh, yes. It felt so good. And so... Yes. Scrooge's redemption was nearly complete. Are you there yet? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. There was one more order of business he wanted to attend to, but it would wait for the next day. The morning after Christmas, Scrooge opened his counting house the way he always had. He settled into the seat at his desk, but this morning, he wore a mischievous smile. His clerk, Bob Cratchit, finally arrived. What is this? Morning, sir. Mr. Cratchit, you are late, sir. Uh, Yes, sir. What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? Uh, I, I'm very sorry, sir. I, I am behind my time. Come here. Step this way, if you please, Cratchit. Bob shuffles towards Scrooge's desk. It's only once a year, sir. I, I shall not repeat it. I, I was making rather merry yesterday with my family. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend. 
I am all going to stand for this no more. And I couldn't more. agree more. Hey, listen up. <laughs> From behind the desk, Scrooge tosses Bob a rather large leather bag filled with coins. Oh, uh, that's right. And therefore... Your bag is quite heavy, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself, Scrooge? I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to double your salary! <gasps> yeah, that's right, Bob Cratchit. Ha, ha, ha! I'm going to double your salary, sir. A Merry Christmas to you, a merrier Christmas than I've ever given to you in a year. And from now, I will endeavor what are to you, assist Oprah your now? family in any way I can. And as for you, Tiny Tim, he will walk again. I'm building a contraption out of a potato and some guitar string. It'll work, I know it. Now, you don't need to say a thing, come on. Let's discuss the particulars over some buttery steak of Roost Chris before I, I gotta go somewhere else, Mr. Cratchit. <laughs> you get a crutch, and you get a crutch. And Scrooge, old Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, as good a man as the good old city knew. And ever afterward, it was always said of Ebenezer Scrooge that he knew how to keep Christmas and keep it well. If any man alive possessed the knowledge, may that truly be said of us, all of us. And so, as... Tiny Tim observed. God bless us, everyone! There we go, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. This has been the Smiley Morning Show's adaptation of A Christmas Carol, starring KJ, Paul Poteet, Producer Will, Tony Williams, Nikki Reed, Scott Swan, and me, Dave Smiley. Thank you so much for the Moondog Tavern. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thank you guys so much. Merry Christmas 2014! We made it. Thank we God. <laughs> oh my God. Take hey, a